Hi, in this example, we're going to do an optimization problem and we're going to optimize uh, a right cylinder can. And what we want to do is minimize the cost of production. So I want to find the radius and height of a metal can that can hold a certain volume so that when I have to purchase the metal, I can minimize that cost. So whatever can minimize the can dimensions to hold a certain volume, then I have to purchase that can, that metal, right? Not every company, like if we take a soup can, like V8, Progresso Soup, Campbell's Soup, anything with a cylindrical can, a right cylinder can, those companies have mathematicians that work there and like try to minimize costs. Now, it doesn't always work because you know, companies want it to look good too, and they want the label to have a lot of stuff on the label, right? So the the actual dimensions of the can that will minimize production costs, they don't always use, but they try to probably stay around there to like not, you know, overly pay for things. So, so we're going to learn how to do that. So if we have a right cylinder, cylindrical can that holds 250 cubic centimeters of volume, let's find the radius and height that can minimize this cost of comp production. In that, we need to know a few things. So here are the pieces that, um, the formulas that were given. The volume of a cylinder, areas of the side, and areas of the top and bottom. All right, so um, if we need to minimize the cost of production of producing the metal, let me draw a picture. I'm not trying to minimize the cost of the volume, right? Because I already know I need to fit 250 cubic centimeters in there of soup or liquid, whatever it is, right? What I need to do is build the metal can. And eventually what I want to do is fill it up. You know, I'm going to fill it, but I need to make the can. The metal itself is not volume, right? Because you're you're gonna form the metal, you're gonna buy the metal, and the machine is going to make it, you know, a cylinder, and then have those little metal uh, circles on top, right? So that means that we don't, we already know what volume we have. We don't need to minimize, maximize volume at all, right? Because we know no matter what, we have to fit 250 cubic centimeters of volume. What we need to minimize is making the can, which is surface area. So let's write that goal. So our goal here will be to um, minimize surface area. And this is why they gave us the area of the sides, right, which is that piece, and then the area of the top and bottom metal pieces, right? And then we fill it up with 250 cubic centimeters of chocolate sauce or something fun, right? So um, if our goal is to minimize uh, surface area, then the first step would be, so again, we had the, the goal here is number one. So number two, the next piece would be to um, come up with a model, right? So find a model for the surface area. Well, we kind of already know, so we can just say a is equal to uh, 2 pi r h plus um, 2 of pi r squares, right? Because we have two top and we have a top and a bottom. Okay, so obviously I, I, when I take derivative, I need everything in one variable. So I have two variables, r and h. So notice I just put a there as a. I didn't put a of r or a of h because I don't know yet. So I'm going to keep this on a sidebar, maybe just kind of star it. Now I'm going to take what's given to me. So what's given is that the volume of this can has to be 250 cubic centimeters. And I know the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. So if volume is equal to pi r squared h, and the volume of the can I need is 250, 
I can easily solve for H. Now, I know some of you think, well, solve for R. And I don't really want to do that because then R, I'll have R squared and then I'll square root everything and have this square root. We could do that and that's not absolute, that's not wrong. It's just, again, we want to work smarter, not harder. And even though it would be a little harder to do the R with the square root in it, I rather work smarter and that's just having a nice simple H, right? I don't have to do anything to it but just plug and chug, right? No square root, nothing. So I'm going to divide each side by pi r squared so you can see that process. So that way we get h is equal to 250 pi r squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this piece here in for h right there. So when we do this, let's go ahead and build the model. Now we have a is equal to 2 pi r h, which is 250 over pi r squared, plus 2 pi r squared. Okay, now I can see that my function here is a function of r. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it as a of r is equal to, and I'm going to simplify these little pieces here. I have r here. Let's reduce out an r. I'll reduce out the pi and then multiply 2 times 250, which is 500. So we'll get 500 over 1r in the denominator plus 2 pi r squared. I wouldn't do more than that because we're going to have to minimize it. So I, we're going to take derivative and do first derivative test. And so it's much easier if they're in pieces rather than just one whole fraction, right, where we use quotient rule. Here we're going to be using simple power rules. Okay, so here's our model. Yay. So let's move on. Now I have the model that I need to minimize. Let's go ahead and go on to step three. And I'll just do that over here. And we'll go ahead and um, find critical numbers of A, right? Because then, uh, just because they're critical numbers doesn't necessarily mean that it makes it a minimum, right? We need to find the critical numbers, test around it, make sure it's like decreasing, increasing around there, and verify it's a minimum. So if I take A of R, which is 500 over r plus 2 pi r squared. Let me go ahead and take the first derivative and try to find critical numbers. So I'm going to have um, negative 500 over c squared plus um, 4 pi c. Right? Bring down the 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then I'm going to use c for critical numbers right there. I like using C for critical numbers because if I keep it as R, I'm implying that that R actually minimizes my metal and I just, I can't surface area of the metal and I just can't say that yet. But if I let it be C then and I test it with the first derivative or second derivative test, then I can verify which one. Then I say, okay, now it's R equal. So it's really up to the student, but I do, I like to keep my thoughts clear. It helps me understand that, no, I, just because it's a critical number doesn't mean it'll minimize, right? So then I can test around it. It just helps me remember the process better. Okay, so in order to find critical numbers, we set this equal to zero, which is equal to negative 500 over C squared plus 4 pi c. All right, in order uh, to get everything in one numerator, we go ahead and just multiply through by that c squared, and we get 0 equals negative 500 plus 4 pi c cubed, right? And I can go ahead and write that part out. We just multiply c squared through just to get rid of the denominators. We clear denominators. It looks a little nicer. I'll add 500 over to that left side and have 4 pi c cubed. Divide each side by 4 pi, so we get 500 over 4 pi equals c cubed. And what I want to do is actually reduce that fraction as much as possible so that um, 
we get a night a simpler fraction if we could so I, I usually just put it in the calculator really quick and then it's 125 so that worked out nicely so we get 125 over pi equals c cube and then we can just cube root so now at this point we know c is equal to the cube root of 125 over pi and we can always rewrite this to um, you know we can simplify it as the cube root of 125 is 5 over the cube root of pi it's up to you really what we're gonna end up doing is because we have one value we're just gonna test it anyways right so if we want to go ahead and test it right verify the critical number meaning that we could just take like a number line and do the apply the first derivative test as 5 over the cube root of pi and just take test values and we can take something like if we decide to put it in the calculator we know that 5 divided by um, the cube root which is math 4 of pi we see that this is going to be 3.41 so we can say 1 on one side and 4 on the other right and we can just test what that would look like so we can say um, what is the sign of a prime and then what is a what's happening at a here so if I put in 1 into the first derivative, which would be here, right? I could definitely see I'm going to have negative 500 plus 4 pi. And I already know that that's going to be negative. If I put in 4 here and 4, so I have negative 500 over 16. And we can put this in the calculator, right? negative 500 over 16 and then add 4 pi times 4 we'll see that that ends up being positive which means to our original function it's decreasing to increasing around this critical number 5 over square root of pi and in fact this critical number makes the surface area of the cylinder a minimum. We have to verify because we just can't assume, right? All right, and I think we have, we're pretty much done after we get the critical numbers and verify, right? So we know now that r is equal to 5 cube root pi, and we'll make the cylinder a minimum. So the last part is to find H. So we can just go ahead and find H by using H's formula. If you recall, we had H. H was 250 over pi r squared. So that would just be 250 over pi. And then check this out. It'll be 5 over cube root of pi. squared so it's going to be a little longer <laughs> so let's see what that would be and again we just need to approximate this to three decimal places so we already have the radius to be 5 over the cube root of pi and so um, let's just finish this here I would just put this in the calculator so we'll have 250 divided by uh, parenthesis second pi times oh geez um, 5 over the cube root of pi 6.827 alright so the radius has to be approximately 3 4.14 centimeters and then the height has to be approximately 6.827 centimeters Ooh, eight